All right, so we're discussing fiddle tunes, okay? They have two, yeah, two things that kind of act as bookends that have nothing to do with the melody, right? And that's one, to set the tempo, and two, to tag the song. So when you set the tempo, you use something that fiddle players would use called the double shuffle. My grandpa called it the four potatoes, right? And that would be something that said what tempo we're going to be at, right? If we're in the key of A... You hear how it's one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three, right? That kind of sets the tempo and then you start into the song, right? Fiddle players may even do one time through with the open string and then add the third, right? Or they could start with the third and add the fifth and then start in. Very commonly, it's the, the root, then the third. And then start playing whatever fiddle tune they want to play. Let's talk about the back of the tune, right? Let's say when you're done playing the melody, right, and it's time to tag it, right? So in blues songs, you may uh, come back around to that turnaround and play that a couple of times through, and then the song's over, right? It doesn't really work like that in bluegrass. There's these universal tags that everybody who's been in the scene recognizes, right? Um, banjo players can hear them, guitar players can upright bass players, and they know that the song is over. So let's say you've just finished playing uh, Bill Cheatham. Uh, so. When you go to tag that song, it had that little extra phrase on the end, right? So we're going to be going over tunes like Salt Creek. We're going to be going over, you know, Whiskey Before Breakfast, Red Haired Boy, a lot of these industry standard tunes. And uh, when you get to the end of the performance, you'll hear me play the melody of the tune. And then out of nowhere, there'll be an extra phrase. Most commonly, the phrase will start on the root and it bounces root to seventh. That's a very, very common tag. I'm going to play that slow. Other tags, like say you're playing Salt Creek and that song has a very dominant seventh sound in it, you would have... Right? So you see how the tag started with the same couple of notes? And then it went to... To that minor third, major third sound, right? That's part one. Usually what will happen is you'll have a tag like that. And it doesn't end there. You'll have an answer. Usually somebody like a banjo or a fiddle player will go. And they'll play. They'll, it almost like finish it out. So like let's say the fiddle player plays. I would jump in and go. You know, some kind of little thing at the end. Maybe it would be a different octave. Fiddle player. Me. Right? Or it'd be banjo player. Uh, maybe he goes. And then I would go. And it's just a different thing that happens. But it's the same amount of bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Three, four. So let's just give you guys a couple of different options here. Right? That's got the pull-off. It's so hard to play at that tempo. Let me play it a little bit faster. All right. And then another option of that would be... Right? And then let's get an option for the end. Right? There's a simple one. Right? And maybe a slick one would be like. So you'd have. Right? So there's how you tag your tunes. And that will be universal for whatever key you're in. So if you're in D, it'd be here. See how that works? So now you kind of have the roadmap, the guidelines, how to start your tunes, how to end your tunes. All right? So let's jump over and start listening to some of these songs, getting our feet wet with some fiddle tunes.